Today we're talking do's and don'ts for asking for a raise. It is a time where a lot of raises are happening now. Companies are starting to regrow and my company is doing annual raises right now. So I thought it was a perfect time to do a topic on raises and do's and don'ts of asking for a raise because there are some things that most people do when honestly, it's really gonna hurt their chances or really gonna decrease their likelihood of getting a good raise or they could have gotten a lot more or they just put their employer in a bad place and that's just something that we don't wanna do. So do's and don'ts on asking for a raise. Number one is pick your time carefully. Really think about the best time to do this. You don't wanna do it when you may be swamped at work. I know that my job has busy times of the week and not busy times of the week or busy times of the month, not busy times of the month. You don't wanna do it when everyone is in crisis mode and everyone is freaking out and everything's on fire. You wanna do it at a good time. You also wanna do it when the company is doing well and not on a downturn or when the company is barely making budget and that is not a good time to ask for a raise. So you really wanna pick your timing carefully of when is the best time, when you're performing the best, when the company is performing best, and when your boss is in good mood. That is always a better time to ask for a raise. When your boss is, is happy with your performance and you know that your boss is, is happy with you. First, don't, is don't let your emotions control the conversation. Don't let your emotions overwhelm you. It is so easy to make this emotional because it's our money, right? Our money, we get emotional. Our money is tied to how we support our family, how we reach our goals, how we go on vacations, how we pay our bills. So much is tied to money and so much is tied to our position and our job and money. But it's very easy to let emotions take control of the conversation and let emotions run the conversation. So make sure that you're able to keep your emotions in check and not let the whole conversation be just about your emotions and how you feel you should get paid and what this will do for your family. But we're going to talk about it in a little bit, but come with some stats, come with some, some facts, some data and not just emotions. And I want a raise because I worked hard and I feel like I should get a raise and I have a family to feed. I have a baby on the way. I have all of these different things and that's why I should get a raise. Don't let your emotions overwhelm you and don't let them control the conversation. The next do is have a list prepared of your accomplishments and what you've brought to the company, what people have said about you. We have different performance evaluations in our company. We have different ways that people can nominate you for different ways that you've gone above and beyond. We have different projects that we work on in a company. I keep all of that in a folder so that when the time comes, I can pull that folder and be like, hey, these people said that I went above and beyond hey, I worked on these special projects. I did this, this, and this, and these are the things that I've done to help improve the company. These are the things that I've done to help our company's revenue. I've brought in these clients. I've done this for the company. I've done all of these different things. Have it all laid out. Maybe keep a Word document or a Google Doc throughout the year, and as you have new accomplishments, as different people say different things about you or different shout outs or different things that you get throughout the year, you can add them to that so that you can come with a sheet of paper and say, hey, look at it all right here. Look at all this laid out, all these projects I did, all these things that I did above and beyond, the new revenue that I brought to the company, the way that I increased my sales, my year over year data. This last year I was doing this and this year I'm trending 10% up and show what you've done, come with concrete evidence of your accomplishments and what you've done and how you've improved the company and revenue that you've brought in if you brought in any. That is a huge, huge way that you're able to show your boss your value and how you do deserve more money and how you do bring value to the company and improve it. The next don't is don't compare yourself to others. It's so easy to say, hey, Susie over there is not doing a good job or Susie over there is screwing up or Brad is doing this and I'm not doing that. I'm not screwing up like this or I'm getting better numbers than this person and I'm doing this or they get a lot of complaints and I don't get complaints. Don't compare yourself to others. Compare yourself to yourself. Compare yourself to last year. Say, hey, this is how I've grown year over year. This is how I've improved rather than comparing yourself to your peers. That's just gonna make you look bad. That's just gonna make it look like your boss, like you're, 
you're putting other people down, which is not going to put a good taste in their mouth. So you only want to compare yourself to you so that you can see your improvement, not to others and your peers. The next do is to know your worth, know what market value is for your position, know what inflation has had this year. It's typically about 6% up this year, which is double typical. So if you're getting a 3% raise, it's really a 3% decrease this year, which is mind blowing. It just it sucks, but know your worth, know how much, like I said before, know how much you're bringing to the company, know how much profit you've brought to the company. Now, I'm not saying that if you bring in $40,000 of extra profit to the company that you deserve a $40,000 raise. No, because we all know that that $40,000 goes to other things. It goes to overhead, it goes to salaries, it goes to keeping the lights on, it goes to all these other things. So don't think just because you brought in a certain amount that that's the amount of raise that you deserve. I wish, but no, but know your worth, know your value and what you brought to the company. Like I said, have those stats, have them ready for the meeting. Next don't is don't keep all your eggs in one basket. I know this video is about asking for a raise and how to get a good raise, but also diversify your income. All of our eggs should not be in one basket. We should not be relying solely on our day jobs. Even if it's a two income household, you don't want it only on your nine to fives. Have other ways that you're bringing in income, whether it be dividends, whether it be an online business, whether it be a side hustle, whether it be different ways of income, that's so important. It also helps to take a lot of the stress off of your shoulders on your day job. I have a side business, this YouTube channel that I have, and I'm bringing in more money for my side business than I am for my day job. But what this helps me do is it helps to take the stress off of money out of us so that I can focus on my job and I can work on my job and put my mind, my focus, and my job, my nine to five, without having to worry about paying the bills. So having that side income, that extra income, it really helps to just take away a lot of that stress so that you can focus and you're not stressed about money. How am I gonna pay this bill? How am I gonna do this? I'm not worried about that stuff because I have other streams of income. Honestly, if we probably were just living off our day jobs and not dividends, not other side income or anything like that, we probably would be a little bit more stressed and maybe not be able to focus as much on our day jobs and really put in our dedicated time. When I'm clocked into work, I'm clocked into work. When I'm working my business, I'm working my business and I'm able to separate it. But having that diversified income really, really helps to give you the peace of mind and also to help you reach your other goals faster. And also gives you that confidence of saying, all right, you know what, I'm, I'm worth a lot of money. I'm able to do big things with our money and hit big goals. And it gives you that confidence boost that, that goes throughout so many different aspects of your life. And it's amazing how people can feel that and people can just see that you're not, you're not stressed about money. It's, it's something that you're like, all right, yeah, I want to shoot for more raises at work and different things like that, but I'm not strapped. I'm not stressed. And it really is going to play a big difference in so many different aspects of your life. The next do is base your request on the value that you bring to your company because your manager will. So base your request on the things that you're bringing to the company. Like we talked about before, not because I have a baby on the way or because we want to buy a house or because I have a family to feed. No, your boss knows that stuff. Your boss or your boss knows or your boss doesn't care. Your boss cares about what you bring to the company. What is your value that you have in the company? When they're evaluating their employees, when they're evaluating their direct reports, they're thinking, okay, Kelly is bringing in this many sales. Kelly is closing this many deals. Kelly is working on this many files. Kelly is doing this. This is the value that she brings to the company. This is what she's able to help us do and help us to reach our goals as a company. That's what they're focusing on. Your manager has a very business mindset and a very business owner mindset of, okay, because they got to talk to their superiors as well. And they have to, they have to say, all right, this is what they're doing. And they have to make a game plan. And so you want to go with that same approach, not emotional, not she's got a baby. She's got a family. She wants to buy a house, all that stuff. That's not going to be the best way because that's not how their brain works. Next is don't present your current salary or position as a problem. You don't want to come in and saying, I'm making $50,000 a year. And this is an issue because I can't do this. Or this is an issue because I should be getting paid this. Or this is an issue because down the street, they're paying their same employee to do this. Or this is an issue because I saw on Glassdoor that they're making this. 
Don't present it as a problem. Instead, negotiate up. When you're bringing your negotiations to the table, have the mindset of what you want in your head. So say you're making 50K, you wanna make 55K or 60K, start with 70, start higher, and then you can work your way down. If you just bring to the table what you want, then they're gonna negotiate down and then you're not gonna get anything close to what you want. So you always wanna negotiate higher to start and then come down a little bit, but not outrageous. So say you're making 50K, you really wanna make 60, don't start at 100, but something that's reasonable as well because you don't want them to be like, she's selfish, she just thinks that she deserves all this or she's just out of our, she just, she's just trying to get all this money from us when she's doing crap work and we need to, we, it's just not gonna work out. So work your negotiations, but a little bit higher than what you really want. The next don't is don't give a full on presentation but have a conversation and you may want to come up with your sheet of accomplishments. But other than that, don't have this full on presentation prepared and all this stuff and all these points and all this. You just want to have a conversation. You want to make it a little bit more casual, professional, but casual and really something that they're able to bring their walls down so you can bring your walls down as well. And that way they're not as on guard. The next do is to consider bonuses and other benefits that they bring to the table or say they can only give you that, we talked about that 50K, maybe they can only give you 5K and say, okay, you know what? Really wanted 70K, we really wanted 60, but we're, we're gonna say 70. You say, you know what? Really wanted 70K, I really believe that I have increased sales, I've done this, this, and this for the company. I really believe that 70K would be very beneficial. Say they can't budge, you know, budgets are tight. It's, it's tight right now. Negotiate something else. Negotiate some extra PTO. Negotiate some work from home days. Negotiate benefits. Negotiate a bonus. Try to find other things that you can negotiate that will help you and benefit you. You know, we work from home now. I am a full-time work from home employee now. That working from home saved me 15 hours a week. It was a three hour commute for me. Hour and a half each way. I live very far and there's a lot of traffic. so. 15 hours a week that saved me from working from home. Honestly, guys, that's amazing. That is a huge perk and a huge benefit, especially for me living so far away. If I lived five minutes from the office, it wouldn't be as big of a deal, but that 15 hours, it gives me so much extra time, extra time with my family, extra time that I can work on my business, extra time that I can work on my side job. And it really also helps de-stress me because now I'm not sitting in bumper to bumper traffic and stress when I go to work or get home and I'm tired, don't wanna do anything, I'm already home. So think of other things that you can negotiate if their budget's really tight and they really can't wiggle, they want to, but they can't, be like, all right, let's think outside the box. Can you give me some more PTO? Can we work on some work from home days? Even if it's not full time, maybe one or two days a week. Can we work on a new computer? Can we work on this or whatever it may be? But think outside the box in your negotiations. The next do may be hard for some people and that is to invite a no. And a no is very important in negotiations because it shows that you're okay with a give and take. You're okay with cutting back a little bit. You're okay with saying, okay, I get that where I can compromise on that and I can give you that and I can, I can say no to that. And so that really shows just how flexible you are and how you are willing to negotiate and that you are willing to have that give and take. So almost set the conversation up so that you're giving them a no and that they think that it's their idea of they're giving a no. And then you're able to be like, okay, I get that. Then that really helps to bring that wall down. So find a way to, to put a no into the conversation that they're saying no to you in some way. That is a really, really great way to also break those walls, break those chains down. So if you can do it at the beginning of the conversation, that's even better. The next don't is don't give them an ultimatum. I see so many times and hear so many stories of people that they have no intention of quitting. They have no other job lined up when they go into negotiations. I, if you, if you don't give me a $10,000 raise, then I'm, I have another job, I'm out of here or I have another job, we need, we, need to, we, need to, we need to increase this. They can bluff that. Or they may call your bluff and say, all right, bye. Then you're screwed. Then what are you gonna do then? Don't give them an ultimatum. It really puts a bad taste in their mouth and I'm sure they've heard it time and time again. So please, don't do an ultimatum. Let's keep the conversation going. 
If you want to know some side hustles, some ways that you can bring money from home, start an online business, start a side hustle, check out this video here. And if you want to know our seven income streams, how we diversify our income into seven different streams, check out this video here. Hey, no, no, no.